Oakley here. Today we're going to be looking at the Ingersoll CS. I'd like to thank uh, JD for getting this to me. I know these are hard to come by. The Ingersoll is a lever lock with 10 levers. It has five on the left side and five on the right. Uh, the way this works is pretty similar to the Miwa U9. Basically the key oops, the key will set the uh, levers to the correct height and what this does is rotate them to the correct position in order for a fence inside the lock that acts like a sidebar to align with the true gate and allow the lock to turn properly. All right, and with that, we'll take a quick look at the internals before we get this picked. Okay, here's the uh, padlock totally disassembled. Uh, nothing too uh, special about the uh, body itself. We have the two ball bearings for the locking mechanism. And then, so like most padlocks, you have to get a couple screws down each shackle hole, but to access this one, you first have to take out this little pin. You have to punch it out. This is uh, retains the shackle here. Won't let you pull it out. So you just uh, hammer that out really easily and then you'll be able to take the shackle out to access the other screw. So the uh, core itself, the way it works is pretty simple. Like I mentioned, we have uh, 10 levers down the keyway here and the key, kind of like a wafer lock, similarly pushes these levers to the correct height. And what that does is rotates them in here to set it to the true gate. And then you can see with the key, once all the true gates are aligned, this fence can sink down in here and allow the lock to turn much like a sidebar. And we can see there's no false gates on this uh, lock, but that doesn't mean it's easy at all. The tolerances on this lock are actually pretty good, so uh, you're not gonna get some decent feedback. You're just gonna have to kind of nudge things millimeter by millimeter until everything is perfectly nestled into place and then you'll finally get your open after a little while if you're patient. So to pick this I'm going to be using a Peterson hook number five and eighteen thousandths along with this uh, z-bar for tensioning. All right we'll start off on the bottom here. movement on two, a little something on three, let's go to the top. something on four. A little something on three. on two on the bottom, a little clunk on three, something on five on the top. Click on three on the bottom. Click on four.
put a little something on four on the top. Little click on five. something on two four on the bottom, click on five, might have got a little something on three down there too. I think I got a little movement on four on the top. Click on three on the bottom. Might have got a little something on five on the bottom there. A little movement on four on the top. Another little something on three on the bottom. A little movement on five. Got some movement on four on the top. A little movement on one on the bottom. I think I got a little something on five too there. four on the top.
There we go. This is three on the top lead. Needed a little nudge. Okay. Sorry about the weird camera angle during the pick. I uh, couldn't really get that to balance in a good way on my vice there, so I had to get a little creative. There's a lock body. Okay, hope you've enjoyed this video on the Ingersoll CS. Uh, please feel free to leave any questions or comments you may have. And until next time, take care and thanks for watching.